Have you ever used a lens where it makes your images brighter or darker as you zoom in and out? You might be using a variable aperture lens and there are some things you can do to deal with it. Let's talk about it on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey there, everybody, welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions right here on Adorama TV. If you've got a photo question, you should know what to do by now. You just go to askdavidbergman.com and submit that form on the site. I just might pick your question and answer right here on a future show. Now, before I dive into today's topic, I do have some very exciting news. I'm leading a seven day group trip to the beautiful Italian Riviera later this year in the fall of 2024. It's a fantastic opportunity to improve your photography skills live with me for an entire week while exploring some of the most beautiful places in the world. Now, spots are filling up quickly. So if you're interested, check out the link down in the description below. Okay, today's question was sent in by Aditya S. I have a Nikon 18 to 55 millimeter DX lens that has 3.5 to 5.6 inscribed on it. The max aperture seems to be 3.5 at 18 millimeters and 5.6 at 55 millimeters. Why is that and how does this work? Thank you. Well, thank you, Aditya, for sending in that question. What you have there is called a variable aperture lens, and they're quite common, especially with lower cost kit lenses that might have come bundled with your camera. Now, if you've watched my show for any amount of time, you probably know what's coming next. Let's back up and talk about apertures so we're all on the same page. Then we can move forward and get to the issues you might face with when using a variable aperture lens, and I'm gonna give you a few ways that you can overcome their limitations. Okay, so I've done videos before about the three parts of the exposure triangle, ISO, shutter speed, and aperture, and I'll put a link to those in the description down below. You can watch those to get some more detail, but basically the aperture setting tells your lens how wide to open up when you take a picture. The wider it opens, the more light can get through to your digital sensor or film if you're so inclined. Now, having a wider aperture available to you means that you can shoot in lower light situations and still keep your shutter speed fast enough to avoid motion blur. So when you buy a lens, you really want to know what the widest opening is, and that's conveyed by telling you the maximum aperture. The lower the number, the wider the opening. For example, a 2.8 aperture is wider and lets in more light than a 5.6 aperture. Now, if you have two lenses of the same focal length and one has a wider aperture than the other, the one with the wider opening is gonna be more expensive. That's because it's a bigger piece of glass. Now here are two of my Canon 50 millimeter lenses. Now, this one's maximum aperture is 1.4 and this one is 1.2. Now that may only be a half stop difference, but you can see that that 1.2 is significantly bigger. The 50 millimeter 1.4 costs around $400 and the 1.2 is $2,000. Now, this is also a newer RF L series lens, so this isn't exactly an apples to apples comparison, but you get the idea. Now, both of those are prime lenses, which means they don't zoom at all. Zoom lenses are much more complex to make because they have glass elements that have to move around while staying optically sharp. Generally, you, can, you can't get zoom lenses with a maximum aperture as wide as a corresponding prime lens. There are, however, two different kinds of zooms. Some have a fixed maximum aperture, so you can zoom in and out all day long with the lens wide open and the aperture won't change. However, you can also buy variable aperture lenses. They don't allow you to keep the widest aperture throughout the entire focal range. At the widest focal length, you can op to open up to a certain aperture, but as you zoom in, the maximum aperture is gonna get smaller. Now, why do they make lenses like that? Well, simply put, they're less expensive to produce. In the Canon world, we've got not one, not two, but three different 24 to 105 millimeter RF lenses to choose from. They all have the exact same zoom range available, but there are different versions for different budgets and uses. Two of them have fixed maximum apertures. The F4 version costs $1,300 and the 2.8 one is $3,000. If you shoot in low light or need really fast shutter speeds, then the 2.8 is the lens for you since that's gonna get a lot of light. It's gonna allow a lot of light in even if you're zoomed to 105 millimeters. Here's that lens. It's a beautiful lens. It's one of my favorites. 2.8 all the way from 24 to 105. But there is also a variable aperture version of the 24 to 105. It's F4 at the wide end, and it closes down to 7.1 by the time you get to 105 millimeters. That's two and two thirds of a stop darker than 2.8. 
but that lens also only costs about 400 bucks. That's quite a difference from the 2.8 or the F4 versions. Now, besides being less expensive, variable aperture lenses are also smaller and lighter. If you're going on vacation, for example, and are mostly shooting outdoors, then a variable aperture lens might be perfect. Like, for example, on my upcoming group trip to Italy. Did I mention that earlier? Make sure you check out that link in the description below. Um, you can throw one of those small variable aperture lenses in your carry-on bag and not have to worry about all the extra weight. Now, even though it's convenient, that doesn't mean there aren't some limitations. Your aperture is going to change as you zoom in, remember? Making your photos darker whether you want to or not as you zoom to the longer focal lengths. In my experience, though, there are three ways to deal with this issue so you can still effectively use those types of lenses. The first one is for photographers who don't mind shooting with an automatic exposure mode. I hope you're not using full program, but you can use something like aperture priority to just set the aperture as wide as you can and let the camera make adjustments to your other settings as you zoom in and out. This is probably the easiest way for beginning photographers or just people who want to point and shoot. The camera will look at the scene you're shooting and make all of the exposure adjustments in real time without you having to think about it. Now, personally, I think it's a bit of a waste to buy a nice DSLR or a mirrorless camera and set it up like a point and shoot. So there is another way to handle this. I prefer to use manual exposure and make the adjustments myself. When I shoot concerts, I often use this lens. This is the Canon 100 to 500 millimeter, which has a 4.5 to 7.1 variable aperture. Now, no matter which lens I'm using, I'm going to change exposures by only adjusting my shutter speed and don't want my aperture to change. So what I'll do before I start is I'm going to zoom out to 100 millimeters, and even though I could open up an to an aperture of 4.5 at that focal length, I'm going to set it at 7.1. Now when I zoom to 500 millimeters, the aperture is going to stay at a constant 7.1 the whole way through. Now the images from my Canon R3 and R5 bodies, they look so good at high ISOs that I really don't mind dialing it up so I can get fast enough shutter speeds. In essence, I'm turning that a variable aperture lens into a fixed aperture lens by just locking it to 7.1 throughout the entire focal range. Now that's the method I've used for years until I discovered a somewhat unknown third secret option. And this is a setting on many of the higher end Canon cameras, although I want you to let me know in the comments if your camera has a similar option. Honestly, I'm not sure if other brands have anything like this, so let me know. Now, way down in the orange menus, there's a setting called Same Exposure for New Aperture. It's disabled by default, but I set mine on ISO speed. Now, what that means is that I can use my aperture at 4.5 at 100 millimeters, and then as I zoom in and it closes down the aperture, the camera's gonna automatically adjust my ISO to compensate and keep the same exposure value. Mind-blowing, right? This has been a game changer for me because I might be at 10,000 ISO at 500 millimeters, which is fine when I want to be zoomed in that far. But by the time I zoom out to 100 millimeters, I'm at 4,000 ISO. This happens in real time and I don't even notice it. That also allows me to continue to shoot manual and change my shutter speed as needed to control my exposure during a concert while also keeping my aperture as wide open as possible the entire time. It's pretty awesome and I only discovered this setting about a year ago, even though it's been an option in the Canon menus for quite a long time. So that's what variable aperture lenses are and some techniques for overcoming their limitations. As I mentioned earlier, the camera manufacturers will often use these as the bundled kit lens when you buy a camera. They're great for versatility and affordability and are a good first lens for new photographers to use. What do you all think? Do you have any other tips for working with variable aperture lenses? Let me know in the comments below. And if you have your own photo questions, of course, go to askdavidbergman.com and ask away. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the Adorama YouTube channel, and ring that bell icon to get notified about brand new videos as soon as they come out. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back here next time with a brand new question right here on Ask David Burton.